Yo, what's up everyone? Back again on the Auto Expos channel. If we talk about carburetors, which motorbikes still use carburetors? It seems that only the Kawasaki KLX still uses a carburetor. This is because the system used in the carburetor is very simple and easy to modify. Maybe some of you are still curious about how the carburetor works. It turns out the carburetor applies the same laws of physics as those used in airplanes. What is it? Listen carefully. Have you ever heard of Bernoulli's law? This is the basic principle of why airplanes can float in the air. But not only airplanes. Carburetors also use this principle. In simple terms, this law explains the relationship between fluid flow velocity and pressure. So, the faster the fluid flows, the lower the pressure. This fluid is not only liquid fluid, but it also applies to air. The engine sucks air through the intake pipe. Well, this will create airflow in the intake. According to Bernoulli's law, the pressure inside the intake must be lower than the pressure outside. This difference is used to suck gasoline so that it can be sucked into the airflow inside the intake. This is the gasoline hose from the fuel tank. This hose will channel gasoline from the tank to a bowl-like part. This bowl functions as a temporary reservoir for gasoline before being mixed with the intake air. If we disassemble the carburetor bowl, we will see several components like this. First, this is the float system. This component is responsible for preventing gasoline from leaking into the intake even though the tank is above the carburetor. The way you see this needle, this needle is like a tap that can open and close the flow of gasoline from the tank to the carburetor bowl. But who controls this needle? That's the job of this big component. It's called a float. And as the name implies, this component will float on a pool of gasoline in the carburetor bowl. When the position of gasoline in the bowl is empty, the float will be pulled down. That will make the position of this needle also below. So the fuel line is open. When the carburetor bowl starts to fill up, the float position is getting higher the rise of the float will also push this needle. So when the needle is pushed all the way up, it will close the fuel line so that the fuel will not leak into the intake. Then there is a vertical hose. This is the hose that channels gasoline from the bowl into the airflow inside the intake. Now, when the engine is turned on, there will be air flowing through the intake. According to Bernoulli's law, the pressure inside the intake is lower than the pressure inside the carburetor bowl. Naturally, the gasoline in the carburetor bowl will be sucked into the airflow in the intake through this hose. The faster the airflow through the intake, the greater the pressure difference, which causes more gasoline to be sucked. But the question is, how to set the engine RPM. It can be done by setting the air mass that passes through the intake manifold. On the PE type carburetor, we will find a scat piston. It is placed in the middle of the intake pipe. This piston will adjust the width of the intake channel. When it is positioned below, the intake pipe will be narrower. And this piston also has a tapered needle so that it fits the position below, it will close the main jet channel that channels gasoline from the carburetor bowl so that the air that is sucked in is small and gasoline is also not sucked in by the vacuum of the Benefold Intech. This will force the engine to rotate at low RPM. The wider the piston opens, the more air mass passes through the intake. The scat needle is also in a smaller position, so the main jet is wider, so that the air mass that is sucked in is greater 
and the gasoline that is sucked in is also greater. This will make the engine work with faster RPM. In addition to using a scat piston, there are also carburetors that use a gas valve. This valve is more or less the same as a scat piston, but its position is after the carburetor. So when the valve is more vertical, it will narrow the intake manifold, so the airflow will be blocked. And the airflow before the valve has a low speed, so the pressure difference is also low. This will suck a little gasoline. But the more horizontal the valve position, the faster the flow rate through the carburetor will be. This will increase the pressure difference so that more gasoline is sucked in. This is the genius behind this simple carburetor. Although the way it works is very simple, the carburetor is able to adjust how much gasoline volume is needed at different RPMs. Although it only relies on the difference in pressure. Maybe that's all the short video about the laws of physics that exist in motorcycle carburetors. Hopefully it will increase our insight.